so it's Saturday 2nd of June um, we, we're in central France it's my first trip of the year this year and we're at a lake where Tim and I we fished here very briefly for a couple of nights back in November 2013 anyway I got down here last night um, very late it was dark and I spent the first three hours um, just getting all the stuff into the boats and then getting the the car back to a, a campsite close by it's a little bit of a dodgy area we're quite close to a large town here and um, quite a few anglers have had their cars broken into so um, it's best to get the car off site um, so anyway I, I, I boated across to the far bank right down the other end of the lake on the basis that this area where I'm on at the moment um, is the most pressured area so I thought I'll keep as far away from there as possible but um, I was up and about before first light there was absolutely no sign of any carp down the other end anyway I came up this end and I saw about four carp within within the space of half an hour they weren't rolling they were flying out the water in a peculiar fashion but they were definitely carp so everything back into the boats and got up here and I've secured this spot now I'm planning on unless it becomes really difficult I'm planning on staying here for a few nights I've got enough stuff with me got enough food got enough bait um, and fortunately um, one of the previous anglers um, has left the markers out there on, on some really nice spots I don't know when the people left but they've left their markers which are which isn't particularly great for the environment but someone was always going to bring them in and um, I've gone I've put rods on all of the markers it's basically because they seem like the best spots I can't find anything else out there a um, few handfuls of live system a few handfuls of tigers around each area oh hello we're away we're away we're away I think I guess you call these this is either a world record rud or some sort of a hybrid it's got to be about five pounds um, that is a rud some it's flipping big rud if it is a rud that's got to be about five pounds in weight um, but anyway took a liking to tiger nuts not good I don't know maybe, maybe it's some sort of a hybrid or white fish but anyway let's put him back right here's the bait we've got here um, three and a half buckets of tiger nuts and peanuts and we've got 30 to 40 kilos of 18 and 24 mil live system um, there are lots of cats in here um, so so fish meals are a no-go um, I've already used one bucket if I just show you what what we're talking about going a bit gun gunky there um, I'll change the water in a day or two and we've got company bonjour bonjour okay so if we're looking out we've got a beach directly opposite I'm just going to zoom in quickly okay so there's the beach looking quite busy at the moment okay. um, so we're up the other end of the lake I'm guessing these two rods on the right here are about 200 meters out on a um, on a spot basically it's surrounded by 10 to 12 meters of water there's a very small plateau of about 15 to 20 meters wide I've just managed to sneak two rods onto it it might be it might be 20 25 meters wide actually 
um, that goes up to seven meters. Um, and I'll be honest with you, someone's left their markers and it is an absolutely pucker spot. Okay, so if we scroll down to the left, we've got the first marker. Right, there we are. Right, so there's the marker float. That was the one that produced that big rod or roach bream hybrid type thing earlier. I've sacked that spot off because even though it's about 150 meters away from here, I think it's too close. But these, these carp have been pushed out, but they are at this end of the lake and this, are, this, this is where the shallow spots are. Anyway, this one on the right here is fished. Cool, let's see if we can zoom in on that. Bit, that's probably about 250 meters away. And then last but by no means least, I've got the rod there fishing up the side of the construction works. Um, I put some bait in there at lunchtime today. Um, I'm hoping, well, basically on, on, on the basis that there's so much action, so many boats, etc. on this side, I thought that that might, um, certainly tomorrow, might produce a bite. Anyway, all for now. Okay. So it's the middle of the day on Saturday, well probably early afternoon now, um, one of the long rods has gone off, um, this one was definitely a carp, such unbelievable fight in this deep water, um, probably played it for about 15-20 minutes, but not a big carp, there we go, about 32 pounds, so off the mark, really happy with that. Look at the lovely yellows on the tail there. Lovely oranges and yellows. Really hard fight. It's very lean. It's spawned. It's not got anything to it. It's prob probably be quite a bit bigger in the autumn. But anyway, 32 pounds. Nice start. Really good condition, these fish. There we go. Okay. There he is. There's the other side of her. A uh, fish took a 18 mil live system shrink wrapped pop up. Fished over about 23 bees plus about three or four kilos of tigers and um, peanuts, which the roach are absolutely loving. There we go. Okay, we'll photo, we'll photo this one in amongst the frogs. Um, it's about 6 p.m. On Saturday evening, um, I put two rods out on the long range spot. Let's come a little bit closer. I put another rod out on the long range spot um, just because I felt like it was going to go. Um, again, th th this one came to a came to live system pop up. Okay, and very very similar size to the first one. <sighs> about 30, low 30s, something like that. Really nice fish, slightly different colour this one, no orange, really grey, a few more scales on it, beauty. Um, this one fought just unbelievably hard. Um, it's difficult to describe, I've got the head cam with me so hopefully during the course of the week I'll put the head cam on and you can see how hard they fight but blimey. Let's have a quick look at the other side. What a lovely carp. A lovely carp. Thank you very much. Okay, let's put him back. Okay, it's just getting light on Sunday morning. Um, let me just get in between the rods there. Yeah, so it's just getting light on Sunday morning. Um, got a bit of rain today. It's got to be a good thing for the um, 
for the carp feeding. Um, I rode one rod out with the with the rod on a very loose um, clutch, and the purely purely just to try and save a bit of um, battery power because. I've only got two batteries and the first one's starting to feel weak already. And then the other three rods I just tickled back just before the wind has started to pick up. Um, I've managed to get the other three rods on the spot. Didn't get great sleep to be honest, but um, at least at least I got a bit of sleep. Um, there's no point in risking, uh, there's no point in risking putting the rods out at night. Uh, I want to be down here for a few days. Um, Let's see how it goes. Um, it's one pike angler that's just come on the water. Always a problem, but um, anyway, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, boat needs a bit of a clean when you're when you're trying to spread bait out. Um, <clears throat> last thing you're thinking about is keeping the boat clean, and when you're trying to lower rigs. So I've got quite a few boilies, tigers, and peanuts in the boat. Just need to sort that out at some point today. Um, but yeah, looking lovely. Hopefully, we'll get a take quite soon. Wonderful. Sunday morning, um, I guess it's got to be about nine o'clock now. Um, two fish already. Um, first 40. Scraper 40. Um, really pale fish with a very big tail. Um, okay, there we go. Saying it's looking good for today. Two fish already. The other one's probably about 35. Okay, let's just quickly. Slightly different angle for you. Okay. okay, that'll do. Let's get him back. Okay, here's the second one. Um, this one went 38. So, um, this one spawned out, but, um, Really muscly. I can feel the strength. I can feel the strength in it. Awesome. Again, live system pop up. Just a few boilies and a load of load of particle, just to try and keep the wells, keep the cats away. Just very quickly. There's the other side. Awesome. Right. Let's get the rod back out. Get the landing net set up. I haven't got landing net set up at the moment. Là, il y en a un. Can't believe it. Um, I don't know what it was. It wasn't the marker float. It got round something on the bottom. Um, and I didn't think there were any snags out there. Um, and and it was it was basically on on the snag. It was basically on the snag. Um, but it was coming, um, but any sort of abrasion resistance with 25 pound whiplash, and it was going to go. And um, I, there was very virtually there was hardly any pressure on it. And just as I got over the top of it, it had one lunge and then it's cut me off. It's a clean break, it doesn't appear to be too frayed, but anyway, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I didn't know there were any snags out there, so that is a disaster. I've no idea how big it was, um, but it probably took about 40 yards of line on the initial run, possibly even more. So I'm going to put some um, 50 pound Power Pro, um, as maybe 40 meters, 40 meters on, 
Um, I c can't use it straight through because the distance I'm fishing out there. Anyway, never mind, never mind. Right up towards the far end of this red um, barrier. Cool, that was a carp. There, there are carp in this corner. Let me just zoom. No, you can barely see it now. But there was a pretty sure that that was a carp jumping there. Um, see some bubbles coming up there now, actually. You can see the bubbles coming up. Coming up in a long line. That's um, that's in that's over really deep water there. Um, I'm I'm well off that actually. If we scroll to the right, my bait is. You can see the line. If you just follow the line up towards the ed end of that that red barrier, it's there. Anyway, good. They're in the area at least. They should have had some of the tigers that I put out yesterday. Um, hopefully, some point this morning. We'll get a bite off it. Got that on film. That was a small one. A few hours after the jumping had stopped, I got a take off the barrier rod, which was immediately snagged. Headcam follows the action.
hope I caught that on camera. I was just doing the um, long range rod, putting it back out. I got back and I, I had a take on the rod along the, um, along the barrier. Um, and it, it, it was just twitching about and got out there and it was round something. And I hand lined it all the way back. My oh, word, hook's come out in the net, can't believe that. Hand lined it all the way back to the snag. Was sure I'd lost the carp. And it pulled off, oh, flipping egg. Bloody hell. Ant biting my leg. It pulled off the snag. Um, and then I had to hand line it in. And again, I thought it was going to be twice this size. It's a oh, flipping egg, something's biting my leg. It's a common of about 25. I, can't, I just can't believe how hard that felt. Low 20 common. Okay. And there is 30 meters of tangled up mono, all frayed. It held out 18 pound if it was anything less, especially if it was that 25 pound whiplash. I'm afraid it would have been a lost carp. As it happens, small common. Hopefully the one I lost was that sort of size. Okay, this was the rod that just produced that small common um, and that was fished just off the edge of the barrier there um, but the carp generally in the morning as you all have seen from the footage were jumping around that area there I think around there um, probably about 100 metres about 100 metres out something like that so, been out in the boat, there's a lovely plateau out there, basically starting from the, starting from the right hand side, basically starting roughly, well the back end of it is right at the edge, at the end of the barrier there, where the barrier splits. And then just scrolling left, oh, let's do that a bit slowly, scrolling left, it just just where you've got the swim opposite it just starts to um, deepen off there going five six seven eight down to eleven and probably there you've got eleven so um, eleven meters up to four and I'm just on the edge of four dropping down to five which I reckon is a better spot but such is life, we're on the set, we're on day two, you can't find every spot immediately. I'll, I've had one bite off further to the right hand side, so um further to the right hand side, so yeah, it's all, all to play for, all to play for on Sunday afternoon. Be fed up with her husband fishing. Not good, another carp angler's arriving. Frogs have just started. 
I've just missioned it back to the campsite um, to put the car behind the gates. All the spots have been baited. I'm just going to wait for first light now and hopefully we'll get some action like we did this morning. Over and out for the night. Okay, okay, very quickly, it's raining, so I don't want to get the camera wet. Had enough problems repairing it in the past. Uh, Monday morning, um, it's been wet for the last hour. I've just got the last rod out. Um, incidentally, I put probably five, I mixed up, what, the tactic so far has been using peanuts and tigers um, for pre-bait in the evening, and then fishing over the top in the morning um, when it gets light um, with with a mixture of peanuts, tigers and, and live system um, purely because there's loads of cats in here um, last night I kept, I kept on the two main spots I kept just peanuts and tigers but I did gamble on the new area and put probably five kilos of boilies again spread out in an area about 50-60 metres in, in length um, mixed it up spread the bait like just a handful here and there so hopefully if there are any cats about um, they shouldn't have all of it um, but I have got tiger nuts on both of those hook baits just because I'm sure there'll be cats in the area that have come in on the smell of the live system so anyway all the rods are out um, we'll see if the new spot produces today because that's that's where the fish were rolling yesterday um, all right fingers crossed Um, okay, first fish of the morning had three, three in the space of the last hour and a half. Honestly, each fish fights for 20 minutes. So I'm just out there, and all I can do is hear my alarms going. There's nothing you can do about it. Unbelievable. Okay. okay. So this one went 35. 35. There we go. There we go, lovely. So that's the first one. Beautiful carp that. Let's just quickly do. And then we'll do the other side. Got a couple of French anglers here. I've come to have a look. There's the other one. There's the other one. Lovely. Okay, first fish done. Um, just quickly, this, this fish came on tigers. Um, on the right hand rod, fished basically directly opposite where they were rolling yesterday morning. In um, four, four metres of water, just before it drops off to eight. Okay, lovely. Okay, having a little bit of banter with the guys here. Second carp, this one was ripping off while I was out in the boat. Wonderful common, absolute wonderful common. Not a huge carp. Um, I honestly thought it was so much bigger, but it's not, it's a small one. It's only 15 kilos, so 33-ish. Wow, what a fish. Let's go a bit closer there. What a carp that is. Okay. Look at that. Yes. Okay. Other side, just very quickly. There we are. Okay, I've got one more in the net. My God. <laughs> tail has just split my hand. Right, my hand. Another low to mid 30. God, if you see any blood, it's not the fishes, it's mine. I've really badly cut my finger. Um, okay, lovely. 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 
There's no weight to this, but um, big frame, it'll be a lot bigger in the autumn. Anyway. Ah, we'll there we are. Merci. Oh, the French guys are absolutely loving this. Okay, right. Let's put this one back for this morning now. Um, all, all spots have gone. I've only got one rod left in the water. I haven't got any bandages. I've really, that last carp just slapped, cut my finger somehow. Anyway, all for now. Okay, so. So the rods that have fished over the pre-baited spots which have just had tiger nuts and peanuts overnight are fished with boilies. Um, that's a shrink wrapped 18 mm um, 18 mil live system pop up and it's fished about two inches, one to two inches off the bottom. Um, it's it's stripped back there so it is supple. It's not like a stiff stiff pop-ups. Um, and that's fished with a size 4 long shank mugger um, you can see there it's on a ring as usual um, but just to prevent on the off chance that, that that bait is either blown out it can't wrap around the supple part and likewise um, if, it, if you're dropping it by boat okay um, there's two key key aspects of this one is that you've got a loop at this end um, you can use a boom a, a, a rubber boom but uh, if you just have a long loop um, it kicks it away because that's a nice stiff part incidentally this is a coated braid this is um, my favorite out of all of them is the th at the moment it used to be the suffix stuff but they've discontinued that so these days I use the Corda N-Trap soft so that that's the one with probably 20 baits around it and then a good few handfuls liberally spread all over the area of, of tiger nuts and peanuts um, for the rot for the area that that had a load of live system last night as well as bit peanuts and tiger nuts i saw a flipping great catfish jump out over that area this morning and i'm convinced that any any sort of live any any sort of boily attraction and they come into the area tim had 15 to 20 catfish last time he was here um, and he was using a lot of boilies um, as, as well as a lot of tigers as well um, and, and no doubt um, some of those cats probably took the boilies before the carp had a chance. I started off with two tigers, um, a little, a one tiger or two tigers all critically balanced, usual trying to be as um, delicate as possible um, and what happened I just started catching those big rud or ro sort of what they call whitefish over here so um, so we're now on stacks of three or four on well they're, they're not long hairs there's about a centimeter gap in between the in between the ring and the bait there um, and probably about six six inches um, six inches of, of coated braid when you're fishing particle, I don't want to go any high, any longer than six inches, um, because the carp, carp are typically moving around a lot slower, um, and and if if they don't tighten up to that leg quite quickly, um, they they're just going to spit the bait out. Um, I do have some pineapple, pineapple tigers with me, but again, a nice bright yellow colour. The rud will home in on that straight away. Um, so so again, as natural as possible. Forget, forget about the little pineapple pop-ups and all the rest of it because they're only going to attract the smaller fish. We're out here for carp and, and the carp, they're used to feeding on the tiger nuts so let's give them, give them the tiger nuts. And this is what I keep in the boat. So I've got, let me just move that out. There are two pop-up rigs in there. One leg core leader. Um, pair of scissors I think I've said that um, only one tiger nut rig in there and it's the most nailed down so there's no risk of um, them getting dehydrated and then turning into a pop-up um, the in, in, incidentally the pop-ups in there are comfortably nailed down to the bottom they're not critical um, again it's not the, the these sorts of um, fine margins is not really the most important thing the most important thing is um, conditioning the carp into feeding 
and ensuring you're in decent spots with the rigs with a sharp hook and your rigs aren't tangled. That's pretty much it. The hook is still sharp so the 4 ounce lead is quickly replaced with an 8 ounce lead whilst in the boat and the tail rubber is lightly nicked onto the lead clip to ensure ejection. The rig is quickly repositioned and baited lightly for the last couple of hours of daylight before I have a rethink on how to fish the snaggy bay. I can't actually believe that. So, so carp were jumping over the spot. Um, there's still actually some movement out there on the left hand side in the deeper water. I've got a chance of one more bite today off this. But carp were jumping over the spot. No surprise the right hand rod went, which is, which is basically fished out. Basically where the construction work, I've only just figured this out. Um, so anyway, out there it goes 10 meters, 11 meters, then it comes up reasonably sharply, up up to eight, then up to four. Um, probably over the space of, um, probably over the space of sort of 10, 15 meters. So it's a proper, proper gradient there. Up and then it goes, sort of it undulates. It's quite, quite rocky up and down between um, between four and five meters. All the way up to the barrier there um, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out but I've only just figured it out because I'm a dumbass um, the four meter to five meter contours um, and the undulations is actually where the construction work has come all the way in here they must have put some sort of a retaining wall in um, done all the construction work because it's definitely basically when you, when you put the lead down on it and bring it up it's this really black clay which is clearly that that stuff it's definitely not the natural bottom but the carp are coming up onto that and they're feeding quite hard on it in the shallower water um, I say shallow four to five meters compared with the rest of the lake which is a lot deeper so as expected the rod's gone off and it's stopped and it's stopped because it's gone round basically it's got gone round one of these bumps it might be a root it might be a boulder it might just be a big lump of clay 
Um, so while I'm trying to get the boat, this has stopped running and clearly it's gone round something and then the fish is just on a short tight line. It's shaking its head while I'm trying to get out there, it's shaking its head and it's pulled out. But, but yeah, tomorrow, depending on how busy the lake is with um, pleasure anglers, canoeists, etc. Um, and um, pike anglers, I think what I'll do on that rod is um, set up a cork float. Um, I'll put braid on it, set up a cork float with a very heavy lead, um, depending on the wind as well, because I don't... And, um, and the idea is then when we get a take, basically that um, just like rainbow style, the cork will hold it above the snags. I think that's the, my best option. So that's what we'll do tomorrow. You, you live and you learn. We'll make, sure, we'll make sure that that doesn't happen again. Okay, rods everywhere, really stormy. Um, and we've got our first 20 kilo carp. Um, came in the storm, which was the rod that I lost the one on earlier. Unbelievable fight. There we are. There we go. His tail, big floppy tail. Wow, look at that. 46 and a half pounds. Um, superb sixth fish of the day. I've got a small common over there. Um, they're properly on it in that corner. <sighs> awesome. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. Trip made already and we're only on Monday. Let's put a lot of bait in tonight. Oh, here comes the storm. I'll start again tomorrow. It's probably about 7pm now. Okay, it's just got light on Tuesday morning. Um, I've just got the last of the rods out. Um, lovely morning this morning. Um, still, which is ideal for um, when you've not got much battery power, I'm still on my first battery. We're just coming up to about halfway through the trip. I've got another battery. I've got, I've got another one in the van. I stupidly didn't think I'd need it. Um, but, but the one that's been on, the one that's been on so far has been the newer of the two. Um, so so I, I want to let it last, Hope, hopefully it will last till the end of the day. It's definitely lost a lot of juice, but um, it's still just about okay. So anyway, last of the rods out, we've got, um, we've, got the, we've got the cork bobber on the far right hand rod, um, just, to make sure, just to make sure it doesn't get any, any of those horrible snags out there. Um, and then we've got one to the left, um, so, so we've got the, the cork bobbers on about four meters of water, then it shelves down to weight, no more than 10 yard, 10, 15 yards to the left of that as it comes down that way. Uh, it's quite a steep gradient actually. There's bait all the way down the shelf, uh, down into 10 meters, and that one's on the left in eight meters. Um, yesterday I have the four fish, I think, off these two rods. Um, the four meter rod produced four bi um, three bites and the eight meter rod produced one. But I have been baiting in a long line from, from the edge of the barrier all the way up, um, probably three quarters of the way across, um, all the way up about 100 meters, probably 50, 60 meters up to the left. Um, I'm bulking the bait out now with a lot of live system, um, purely because I'm running out of tiger nuts. Um, I've got a huge bucket of peanuts again in the car. I've not got the opportunity to go back. So we're, we're working on a mix of probably 60% live system, 40% tigers. I've run out of peanuts now. Um, and with the introduction of more boilies will mean there'll be more cats about. Um, so I'm now just using tiger nuts on all rods on the heads. 
um, stacks of either two, three or four, depending on what suits. Um, well, it's just a bit of a mixture really. One problem with the perch bobber is that the koi poo's already gone into the line once. I don't think it dragged the lead, um, but at this time in the morning the koi poo are active, they're moving about and they can always cause a few problems. So anyway, those two there, and then I've got the two rods just on the, on the main long range spots. Each one produced one bite yesterday morning. Um, and this is where the, the majority of the carp are now on this side of the lake. So um, it's no real surprise to be honest. There's, there's people rotoring the corner swim. So up that side, there's lines in the water all the time. Um, now, there's not been many lines up the right hand side. So the carp have kind of migrated across. In, in, incidentally, um, there's a young couple who have tented up, kept, they've pitched up their tent no more than probably 10 yards behind my bivvy. Why would you come round here? I suppose they want to get away from the outdoors, but I don't know why they'd want to do it right next to me. So much for a romantic night under the stars. Uh, where you've got me snoring 10 yards away from them. Uh, crows are off from their night, night sleep. Okay, anyway, all for now. So my bivvy's there. You're not gonna believe this. So, just to put it into perspective, the car park is up at the beach over there which is probably a kilometre or so away and the people have come camping there Like there's more rain on the way it looks like it's going to be raining on and off for the next few days now um, see I've got the rods even higher um, purely for ease of getting the boat round um, if, if, if the bay rod goes um. okay you are not going to believe it um, new personal best um, 45 minute fight I landed this 400 meters away from where I hooked it. Um, 29.5 kilos, 65 pounds. Um, quite unbelievable. Um, my life is made. There we are. Look at that. Look at that, fish came on double tiger nut, absolutely nailed on the long shank mugger, fished over several kilos of tigers in live system. Oh my word, look at that. Oh my God, got my lucky Reebok top on from 1994. It's a 14 year old. Oh, there we go, there goes the app. Would you believe it, memory cards died on me. And, and, wow. and photo that. Yes. Merci. Okay. Okay, here we go. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. It's okay. Okay. A photo, s'il vous plaît. And 
here are the lucky campers who basically helped me photo the carp. Uh, Tutu Perkamore? Emre. Emre, eh? Laurie. Laurie. Comping? Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. They're just looking at the photos now. Anyway. Okay, let, let's put into context what that battle was actually like. So, so I hooked the carp. I hooked the carp um, 10 metres to the left of that marker in about 8 metres of water, which shelves up to 7. Oh, don't know if you've got that on film. Which shelves up to 7 right on the top of it and then down to about 11 metres on either side. Um, I'm on I'm on eight purely because um, the top of the the top of the plateau is right on line with the boy and I wanted to be left of it so basically minimizing chances of the carp actually going around the boy so anyway I hooked the carp it's gone 100 meters on its initial take it's taken 100 meters whoa carp just jumped there whoa just over the back of the bait so anyway it's gone a hundred meters diagonally past and right round the boy kind of in line with where that splash is where that carp just launched itself out there um, I've gone out in the boat I've gone round the boy um, and it's then turned round and it's come back past the marker there and it's traveled left and it's and bearing in mind I'm on 25 kilo power pro and I'm giving it as much look at that another carp's just jumped um, I'm giving it as much teddy as one would dare um, when when basically carp fishing bearing in mind they've got relatively soft mouths um, anyway it's traveled from that marker there oh no that's the tip of the rod so from the marker there it's gone past it 100 yards, I've gone out, I've got over it. It's then travelled all the way around here. More and more past the beach. Let's just zoom out to put this into context. There's the boat ramp. And there's another marker there. Where my left hand rod's on. It's, it's gone probably 100 metres to the back of that. So it's travelled probably 150 200 meters there in one run bearing in mind it's already gone 100 meters back it's then turned around again and it's traveled back this way but not only back this way but it's traveled out towards the beach area there towards those towards those willow trees there okay now i um, at this point, I'm thinking I've got a world record on. Um, it, bearing in, I, I literally couldn't do anything with it. Um, people talk about big carp being um, being slow, ploddy fighters. Well, this couldn't have been further from that. It was swimming at so such speed, it was like a killer whale chasing dolphins. Literally, it was swimming so fast. Uh, uh, Honestly, I wondered what I'd hooked. I knew it wasn't a cat because I was um, I was fishing with tiger nuts. Um, anyway, it's it's then swam back probably 200 meters in that direction. Um, we're now we're now 400 meters, probably three 400 meters from the nearest marker, from the marker where I hooked it, which is out there. It's probably done near on a kilometer of swimming. And, and, and it, all this time it's going up and down and I am giving it more and more and more teddy. I'm starting to think I've found hooked something in the tail that's a world record. Um, and then back, back this way, right over by the willow tree, right over by the willow tree on the beach, I was starting to get very worried that it was going to go under the, um, the rope that's cordoned off for the swimmers. It just came up and it just ever so gradually started coming up and up and up and four, it must have been four, I looked at my clock when I got back and it was 55 minutes later 
and I'm thinking right probably two of the rods have been spooled um, at this point with carp that have just hooked up but fortunately none of the rods none of the rods are gone oh here we go no no so anyway anyway let's come back out and then 45 I'm, I'm guessing putting it into onto context I'm guessing I was above the cart for 45 minutes um, and then out of the blue came that monster not a mark in its mouth there's absolutely no uh, I'm, I'm going to compare photos with all the other big carp that I've seen out of this lake to see which one it is but every one of these carp fights harder and it seems like for every pound of weight you can basically add on about 30 seconds to the fight um, normally you'd expect bigger carp to be slow this was anything but slow it was so fast and it was so strong I just can't believe it I cannot believe how hard that fought okay over and out okay two glasses of pudding wine or dessert wine um, it's quite sweet wine, it's pretty nice actually, an Alsace, an Alsace sweet wine that my French mates came with um, that seem incredibly friendly, they've brought me a load of beer and some wine I mean, who, who in the UK would come round and, um, and, bring, and, and have a chat with you can't even speak the same language, you get by and they'll buy you, buy you some beer I mean, how nice is that? I offered to pay for it, but they insisted that that that, um, that, that it's all it's all on the house sort of thing. Anyway, um, while they were here, a couple of couple of glasses later, same rods ripped off. We've got a lovely little carp. Um, it's not a very big fish. It was only about 18 pounds. Um, anyway, let's get him back and let's get the rod back out. Okay, um, just gone lunchtime on the Tuesday, fourth fish of the day. I'm so worn out just from going out to these long range spots and then having a 15 minute battle. I'm seriously, I must be burning 5,000 calories a day. But anyway, left hand rod has roared off. Um, I seem to be achieving one, one bite a day from the spots where the carp aren't generally located and then several bite, bites from where from the general location um, only have I've had four bites today but we are only on lunchtime I don't doubt that I don't doubt that somewhere on the lake the fish have moved and they're busy chomping away but um, anyway anyway left hand rod long range rod has ripped off um, gone out there once again a long long battle lovely common um, of 38 pounds um, I think it's carrying a little bit of sport look at that long beautiful colours lovely commons these and dare I say it I honestly don't believe these long kind of river looking carp fight as hard as the big mirrors the big mirrors just will not come up off that bottom which is very unusual. Normally you'd say a big common fights harder, but so far in my experience, not here. Okay, and there's the other side. Lovely. Beauty. And there we go. It's late afternoon on Tuesday. Um, four fish today. It's been quiet for the last five, four or five hours. Um, it's really hot. It must be about 28, 29 now. Um, and um, the love, the lovebirds that have been camping out behind me um, asked to borrow my boat to go back to the um, park and collect some water. And I said, well, why don't you take my rucksack and use my bike? 
nice and easy um, and instead they wanted to um, they wanted to use my little boat I couldn't I couldn't offer them the big boat because in case I get a run so anyway they've used my little boat with one oar they're just on their way back now it must have taken them an hour to get there and back he must be knackered he's a boxer by trade so um so this must be quite good exercise for him um i offered them the life jacket as well because it looks a bit precarious out there um absolutely mad so only four fish today um and last night was the first night that I introduced a lot more boilie um, because the catfish absolutely love boilies. Any, any boilie, any manufacturer, catfish are going to love them. Um, particularly fish meals. I'm obviously not using fish meals, I'm using live system. But since I put all the bait out last night, I haven't had as many takes today and I'm sure it's because the cats have come in on the boilies. Uh, bearing in mind Tim did catch about 20 of them. And, and they've cleared out a lot of the boilies and probably scared a load of the carp off particularly if it's a big cat so well I've got one puck I've, I've not got enough tigers left to be able to last for three more days so I've got peanuts back at the van so I've basically put a sealable bag in the rucksack and what we're going to do well, when, when the rods are in tonight I'm going to ride back fingers crossed the gates open to the campsite and we're going to fill that up with peanuts um, and that will probably allow me one more night um, pre-bake okay it's early evening the rain's just started we've got a huge storm brewing um, and the bay rod has ripped off um, we've got a wonderful wonderful 42 pounder again it's not got much width to it there we are beauty came on the cork bobber rod uh, it picked up a lot of crap today and it was a rock solid type braided line and I thought hmm don't really like that but anyway it's ripped off with this oh, beautiful right, let's show you the other side let's just quickly there we go thank you very much again wonderful carp okay this is I think this is the better side well they're both pretty nice sides this one's got a mark in the mouth. Okay, there we go. The matey boy's just borrowed the bike um, to go to get some cigarettes. Anyway, there we are, lovely. Right, let's put him back. Okay, before that battery dies, um, five carp today. Um, five carp today, a um, couple of small ones, the big un, a 38 common and a 42 so so yeah pretty damn good day to be honest um, caught bobbers working dreams on this rod um, every take it's just ripping away away from all the, the snags um, the, the battery's gonna die on that but yeah five carp today um, thunderstorms on the way um, hopefully one more before it gets dark it's about 7 30 p.m. see that cork bobber out there so there's the cork wow look at that bubbles coming up right next to it see Mount Everest Society Do you see those bubbles just come up there I wonder if that was the bottom or whether that was a carp. I've literally just put one handful round it on the basis small bubbles coming up to the back there. I've literally just put one handful on it on the basis we've only got an hour of light left before we've got to start the pre-baiting routine. Anyway. Could tighten that up a bit, but it's really not worth it. <sighs> ah, you fucker. Mm. 
that's the rod. Um, again, it's produced quite a few bites. I don't think I've had any forties off that rod. Um, I don't think that, that this is the plateau side of the lake. This one on the left hand side from where I look. So the plateau goes round, it's kind of in this bay here to be honest. Kind of the plateau kind of dog legs round, round there. There's a guy, zoom in on him. This guy who's fast asleep there. He's got his markers there. There. And there and there. See how the day goes. Okay, so while I was deliberating what to do on those rods, saying that it normally takes an hour or so after you boat your baits back out to get a take, well, the um, same rod has just gone off, um, which is out on the long range marker. And we've now got two sacked up um, again. So the first one's around, the first one's 45. Um, and this one is similar sort of size, possibly slightly smaller another brace of 40s this morning um, I'm just going to get that rod back out and do the photos um, do, do the video in because um, um, you're not supposed to set carp in France e even if it's for such a limited time like this um, I don't really want someone coming around and telling me off I'm too old for that anyway let's get that rod back out okay 45 pound of this one Oh well, oh la la, jolly. Oh, jolly. That's 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 jolly.
Mais c'est surtout de la tête, de la tête à la tête. Right. I've got one yeah. more similar sort of size. Yeah. Get this one back in the middle. Hey, can't believe, can't actually believe it, but the um, this one is bigger. We've just weighed it at 21 and a half kilos, so that's about 46 ish. 21 point. 21.5, it's got a bigger frame, but less belly on it. There we go. If I knew that they could, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. If I knew they could take photos, I would have gotten to take a photo on my phone. Bella. Okay, um, monsieur, c'est possible photo pour moi? Si, um, Okay, just very quickly. So, um, top, en français, topi. Torpi. Torpi. Oui. Torpi. Torpi. Comme ça. Oui, torpedo. Comme ça. Anglais, torpedo. Torpi. Yeah. So we've got torpedo common of about 12 pound, 10, 12 pound. Makes a bit of a change from the. Um, Bit, bit of a change yeah, from the 45 pound nearest. Anyway, it's Okay, tackle everywhere. Um, it's 12 o'clock now. I've had six today. Um, physically I can't actually do any more than I'm doing um, every time I'm getting fish I'm either putting it back out there and put placing the bait on the spot um, re-rigging re it and putting a lead on while I'm out there it's, the winds picked up a southerly it's coming right up this end and it's turned the carp on and most of the time one of the rods is ripping off so six fish now this morning um, Four of them have been between 12, which you saw the common, and probably I had a, another common of about 25 and a mirror, probably an upper 20. Again, I just got them out of the net and put them back while I was in the water for the sake of, um, that's not really what we're here for, we're after the bigger ones. So um, just put them back and um, place the rods back on the spots. So you forever time rigs. I've not actually eaten anything yet today. I've had one can of Red Bull. I must have burnt about 3,000 calories just rowing. Um, it's, I, I tried to get a little bit on, um, I'm, I'm not very experienced, I'm certainly not very good with the head camera. I tried to get some of the footage with the head camera. Um, the only practice I've had is really perch fishing on the river Medway back home. Um, so I think I got the angle right, but whether or not it's come out, I do not know. But you all have seen from that that um, again, I'm, I've not got one of the long shafts on the on the Minn Kotas, um, so I'm not particularly great. When you only fish once or once or twice a year with a boat, um, you're not going to be absolutely you're not going to be absolutely superb at playing carp in this. And unless unless you fish more regularly with them, you're not going to be that great. I mean, I've not had any disasters, not had any any examples of I've not had any instances where I've gone through another line um, and I've not got any of the braid or anything tangled up in the motor so there haven't been any disasters but um, I'm not superb at getting out there and over the fish um,
Okay, well you saw the take, and it is a flipping monster. 25 kilos, 55 pounds. Fat one, this one. Could I get it off the bottom? You know what, if that's one of the other bolts running, I don't care. this is turning out to be. Van Nerf kilo, Van Sank kilo, Van Ter kilo, Van Ter <laughs> kilo, Van Kilo, and then loads of backups. My God. There we go. Oh, where? Awesome. Again, the fish came on the long range rod. All the big ones have come on that rod. Where? So I want to get the rod back out. Okay, merci. What a fish. Okay, it's just got light on Thursday morning. Oh, I'm so tired. Um, I don't feel particularly well, to be honest. Um, flipping pull. When I was trying to lift the battery into the boat yesterday, I strained a muscle in my neck. Um, that didn't help. I just got nowhere near decent quality sleep. Um, and this morning, um, basically, the Day by day, the boat gradually deflates, which is which is quite normal. Um, it's an old boat, and the valves do have incredibly slow punches. So anyway, this morning I've attempted to um, pump up the boat. So many things can go wrong on these trips. I've tried to pump up the boat, um, and one of the valves, for whatever reason, isn't isn't holding the air properly, and then the and then the attachment pumping out valve on the pump um, also isn't taking air very well so so by attempting to try and pump the boat up a bit harder I've actually lost lost a bit of air in the boat um, and I dare not try again because that's my only source of transport back to the boat ramp so I think we're just gonna have to make do I'm gonna go tomorrow afternoon I've decided Friday afternoon Basically, the, ferry, the, the tunnel's at 4 p.m. on Saturday, um, and we're a long way south here, so um, ideally I want to get back and see the kids um, early Sunday morning, pay the extra on getting, the, getting the, an earlier tunnel. Um, I don't mind paying extra after you've had a 65 and a 55. Um, so that'll be the plan. We'll, we'll leave tomorrow afternoon after take time, take time, appears to be mainly up until sort of two three o'clock and then you might have the odd spurt of feeding after that Bloody 
land. As can be seen, the carp seemed intent on heading for the construction bay to my right. Not wanting to waste too much valuable battery power, I conceded defeat and followed the carp under the other line. Okay, nice common to start the morning off. Um, lovely carp, probably just under 30 I'm guessing. Whilst dealing with the common, the remaining long range rod registered yet another take. You can see here a short sharp pull followed by a drop back where the carp has most likely ejected the four ounce lead and risen from the bottom in the deep water shaking his head and trying to dislodge the long shank mugger. A short time later the carp slowly moves away and diverts my attention from the unhooking duties. Okay, rods back out on the spot. Um, quite unbelievable. I've got a, a carp somewhere between 56 and 57 pounds in the sling. Because um, there were no other lines out there, I thought it was my first chance to try and winch one in from the bank. Um, and, and to be honest with you, it didn't fight, fight as hard as the one, some of the ones um, of that sort of sort. It certainly didn't fight anywhere near like the 29 kilo, but. Um, it didn't fight as hard as some of the other ones that I've been trying to play from the boat. It took probably 15-20 minutes just in and around the bank here to, uh, but you seem you get a bit of better per purchase um, and obviously you're not moving around in the boat. Um, so, so yeah it was nice to be able to play one in from the bank um, and being that big my god it's just like a 
flipping baby whale. Um, so yeah, three carp over 25 kilos, another another three or four over 20. My life, and a load of load of backups as well. I don't, I've never never had anything like this before. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I was just thinking about it. Um, undoubtedly, someone's done all the hard work for me. And Mark has placed on those two, oh, well, specifically the one straight out, but um, I have had a 46 on the bay rod and a, f a few other 40s on it, but um, um, the, the main, the big ones have come from the main markers out there. And um, undoubtedly, bait has been established before me, um, possibly over the entire spring, possibly over the last few weeks. Um, but someone's been fishing here because obviously I found rigs, the markers were left there and um, it's just towards the end of the week having applied buckets and buckets of particles and live system um, towards the end of the week, we're on Thursday now, the big carp have come in on it. And I'm, doubt, I'm sure that they've been feeding on that area for weeks probably over other people's bait and people might have been catching good results but I'm sure that's why I've had big ones someone's probably done the hard work for me but um, I'm certainly not going to complain about that quite an unbelievable session it's going to be very lively oh. okay okay that's if you want there we go awesome Oh Okay, c'est photo oui? Okay. Oh yeah. Oh c'est magnifique. 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 See, magnifique. Hey, um, and just quickly we'll do the other side. There we are. There we are. Look at that. Perfect angle to hide my double chin as well. Il me comme ça, bien de face. Hop là. Got another carp hang to arrive there. Oh, was that a carp jumping? Try and do all this in the water. Another common. Cool, oh, wow. I think that's kind of spawning um little nodules, spawning nodules on them. I'm not, it feels really coarse. I'm certain it is. It's like the bream. It's dorsal fins up for us. Nice common. Probably upper 20, I guess. Mid, mid to upper 20. Okay, mid-afternoon on Thursday. I'm starting to wind down now. Um, action's died off a bit. Got a lot of activity on the water. Another carp angler. So there's four on now. So the lake's reasonably stitched up. Um, anyway, 
while I was trying to get some sleep, I'm so exhausted, while I was trying to get some sleep, um, the catfish boat took out my line and they dragged, they dragged the lead into something on the bottom and then they left it. So, so I just thought that they'd unhooked the line and I'd got a drop back, but I tightened up to it and it was rock solid. Um, so I went out in the boat and, um, and the hook was embedded within this bloody great stone. I don't know if you can see that there, but the stone is covered in mussels. Um, undoubtedly what I got cut off on I'm actually amazed that um, I haven't been cut off more on it. Those muscles are unbelievable. All it needs is to be taken around one of these these little points here and it's just going to cut off on that. Um, so yeah, so on this occasion, bloody catfish boat. The clonkers were plonkers on this occasion. Anyway, over and out for now, back to sleep. So, so here's the cork bobber, which is quite simply what they use at Cassian and other places with lots of snags. Um, some of them time they put some sort of a stop knot up the line to hold this at a certain distance under the water. Uh, I'm just having it on the surface, so there's no stop knot. It's quite, quite simply that cork, which is on a big running ring, so it can't tangle, comes up to the top and keeps your line out of the snags. Um, yeah, so, so anyway, had several fish on that. Um, hasn't seemed to make too much difference. Even, even the takes are still rippers with, when they're on that. You can just see this bouncing around on the surface. A bit slightly bigger lead. It's an eight ounce lead on that one. A couple of tigers. And the long shank is still absolutely needle. Okay, Friday morning, bang on take time. Um, this trip just gets better and better. We've got here 49 pound common. I knew there were some big commons in here, people had told me, but I've not seen any yet. Um, absolute beautiful dark common. Um, What a common. Oh my god. Let's just slightly move the angle there. It's even better. 49 pound common. Check it out. Something else. Okay. It's very quickly. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Okay, van back in play, and we've got this lot to sort out. Goodbye, Lake. Right, let's get packing. Let's get packing.